Welcome back, friends. Today we are taking a look at the Square Enix Bring Arts. That is their fairly new 6-inch line of action figures based on the Final Fantasy and Kingdom Hearts games and things of that nature. This is the classic Final Fantasy VII Cloud Strife. $130. You can pre-order the next wave on their website right now. And <laughs> for $160, you... <laughs> You can get a the digital deluxe edition that's this figure plus a digital version for an extra thirty buck. That's just that's, that's I'm sorry, but for, especially for video game fans, I feel like we just intuitively understand that this whole digital figure thing is absolute BS. Mr. McFarlane, he's got his his his, his thing about oh well you know you know well what about people who live in different countries and don't have the money or the access or the space? Yeah yeah yeah. But the reality is that what's a digital figure? It's a little figure you can look at, maybe rotate on the internet. What's a video game? It's a digital version that you can actually take out and play with. It's nonsense. This is nonsense. $130 for the figure anyway is nonsense. But let's take a look. Leave a like if you didn't pay $1.3 million for a digital picture of a monkey. Top. And bottom. And just a big fat clam inside of it. Admiring the aesthetic, this is Cloud Strife, the main character from the Final Fantasy VII video game series. Back in 1997, right? Right? I was renting this from Blockbuster Video and freaking skipping school to play it. It's ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. Like I said, this is from their new Bring Arts line, down at a 6-inch scale, and he looks, he looks pretty great. Spot on. I mean, this is instantly recognizable as Cloud, and they've hit it with all this extra paint all over it. Like... Every section has this, this, it's just like some darker tone they've picked. I mean, from the hair to the, the, the flesh on the arms, subtle there, but you can see how it's maybe a little redder in some spots. It's, it's really noticeable here on like on the brown parts. There's some black over that. You can really tell on the boots here. And it's not like a, like a wash per se. It's, it's almost like a little airbrushing. Definitely on the pants here, these little, little gradients. And that's, I, I think that's fantastic really breaks up. It, it doesn't It doesn't look so plasticky, you know, just doing something like that. And these models from way back when, based on character designs by Tetsuya Nomura and uh, and uh, and Yoshitaka Amano, of course. We were, we were in that transitional era where they were sort of letting Amano do his thing, and then Nomura was like, yeah, 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 but it's going to look like this. <laughs> so he, he's chiefly responsible for these more modern steampunk-ish Final Fantasy designs. They're super, super iconic at this point. He moved away from the traditional fantasy, and it was a point of contention for some, but, but I mean, look at this sucker. That face is just spot on. It's, it's, it's Japanese styling, and so it, it lended itself to the sort of chibi thing with the exaggerated features to show off expressions when, with, with minimal detail, you know? But, ah, look at that. You can see maybe a little, a little heavy, little gl glob of black there. The, the joints, it makes it look a little funny. We'll get, we'll get more into that here in a minute, but I really, I'm really impressed with the look of this figure. It is just spot on. Look at that. The zippers on the boots. Strange little things that break it up. The, the way that they've, you know, the joints that they've used here, you'll have strange little gaps like that. Same thing at the boots. Uh, no peg holes, but he does have texture on those, so that is cool. And they've got this little back plug for adapting the Buster Sword. And this thing, even, even the shoulder pad, this crazy steampunk shoulder pad with these big fat threaded ends with like nuts run all the way down on them, just cut those off or, 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 or don't. I, I don't understand any of that. <laughs> it's definitely, uh, form over function. Really nice emblem on his wrestling belt though. The Shinra Electric Power Company Soldier Uniform. Getting into the movement though, this is a really, this is a really interesting figure. Everything is, uh, is up, is pegged onto a ball joint. So if you can see that in there, I don't wanna, I don't wanna tear the head off, cause it's hard to tell which ones have give and which ones are just going to break. I just, go ahead and assume everything is going to break. This guy isn't necessarily delicate, but I can, but he will break. I, you can feel that he will break. I just, I'm trying to make that distinction here. You felt weird, brittle, cheap figures before. It's definitely not that, especially not with the like the $130 price tag. I know it comes from Japan and I'm paying some of that. Some of that is in the shipping, you know, but uh, ah, it's officially released now. And, and, and I just looked it up. It's $180. So if you were tripping on the 130 you are high. Now it's $180. 
I've also pre-ordered the Sephiroth and the Tifa. The Sephiroth, I don't think, is coming until some the end of next year, they were saying. But uh, you never know. You never know. Anyway, anyway, so the, the shoulders, it's on these, like, uh, again, it's, it's a little ball joint here, so it, it, you know, it hinges, it, it, it rotates on that, but it's just, it's finicky, and you can see it's just another ball in here, almost like the Revel Tech stuff. It's definitely not a Revel Tech, you know, but they've put the balls in everything, and it's really, you know, it works, but it's kind of fiddly, kind of obnoxious, kind of makes me think that they've never seen another modern action figure before. Um, the hands, they'll be on a little ball joint, and they're just on a straight peg, like uh, like Mafex figures and stuff like that. So that's okay, but they come off fairly easily. Let's stop, you know, picking on, like, the floosh ninjas, beating up on the little guy. It's just disgusting, because all the major companies have issues here and there with their hands coming off too easily. The new NECA Mirage Ninja Turtles, those hands will come right off. The McFarlane Toys Build-A-Figure Bane, try to move those hands without them popping off. The Wolverine, the brown costume, both releases from Hasbro, they straight just fall out. They just fall out, so let's not beat up on the little guy. <laughs> because your $130 figure, man, his hands will just come right off. That said, you, you get good range here. I mean, it'll come up past a 90 just at the arm. And, and it, uh, it, it rotates on there-ish. You don't, you don't want to get carried away because it's all hinging on these tiny little pegs. And it doesn't just slide off of here like it does at the wrist. So they will tear, they will break if you're not careful. It, definitely, I think careful is the watchword for a little import figure like this. Um, he's got a diaphragm cut here and you can come forward pretty well on that. Back, not really anything, but he rocks side to side a good bit. Oh, look, the head just came out. It's, it is on a little peg. Looks like it's just a peg on each end then with the ball joint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got no nails. I can't get him out of there, but you get the idea. And you see what, 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 what he's capable of. Ball joints are kind of annoying to me. It's sort of the cop-out answer. It's like, yes, it can technically go any which way, but it's very finicky and fiddly the way that you have to do it. It's just not as intuitive. You know what I mean? And you want your toys to be simple and fun, not overly complex, but also not overly simple. So down here at the waist, this is just like a diaper piece, how a McFarlane does. The belt is soft as well. The legs are a uh, ball jointed in, and uh, there's sort of like an upper thigh cut here where it'll rotate on that, which is neat, which is neat. You have seam lines on the pants, so you can kind of line it back up. Here's something really interesting, though. I mean, these are just, they don't necessarily come out that far before they pop out of place. And you can see where the ball socket's in, and it's got this little, you know, these little nested doll pieces here that allow it to rotate some. And this ball actually moves a little bit, too. But, look, it's very easy to pull apart. And you can take all of this out of here, and look how crazy this is. This is the lower torso piece, and it's just... Get to see behind the curtain a little bit here. It's it's cool, but it's also it's a little underwhelming. You're like, really, man? $130 and it's just a little seesaw and ball here. And uh, you know, you just you just kind of stick it all back together. And again, brittle brittle is not the word, but it 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 is fiddly and it's 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 a little delicate. Single jointed knees, they really don't look too bad. It's crazy looking, sure, but uh, I think like a McFarlane toy, you'd just be left with this big jagged centerpiece chilling there in the middle. At least it gets good range, comes back past a 90. Nothing at the boot or anything calf-wise, but down here at the foot, it's going to come back and forward, and it, it, it will technically rock. Again, it's the ball joint, so you've got to orient that right. Also, it looks like it's just pegged straight up into the leg, so, you know, you can get really get to see the inner workings of these, and it's just... It's interesting the way it's put together, but it's almost, it's very rudimentary. It's, he moves, I mean, he moves pretty well. You can get some great poses out of this guy. But you just, you want to make sure that you're not trying to push the joints in the wrong way because they're ball joints. Look how tiny that piece is joining. That's just asking for trouble, man. That's crazy. That's crazy. And you can't really see the one over here. Oh, this is the weirdest part of all. Look, it's another ball joint on top of the shoulder that runs this shoulder pad. Just just have a little loop that the arm pegs through or something so it sticks on there. Again, like they've never seen another modern action figure before. It's so weird. And, I mean, really, he, he, he can hold the sword with two hands. But it's just, it's fiddly, it's not intuitive, and his arms don't want to stay there. For accessories, he comes with a few additional hands and the signature Buster Sword, which, uh, you know, in a figure stand, which the sword looks great. We all want to see the sword, but puzzlingly, I mean, it, it is 
It's weathered, man. It looks like Advent Children era, which is in stark contrast, of course, to this blatantly Final Fantasy VII outfit. And it's clean, it's fresh, just just as he looks. So it's like brief timeline, you know. He picked this up from his boy, he did his thing, and when it was over, he planted this sucker in the ground with both hands like a memorial for his friend. And uh, he walked away from it all. It's a beautiful thing. And that sword was just left out there to weather and rot. Which, what, of all the things to break somebody's, you know, uh, immersion, the idea that you could just leave that bitchin' sword there for years and it's fine, that's ridiculous. You can't leave, you can't leave anything laying out in this world, man. You can't leave your car on. People are freaks. They take just garbage, worthless garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, what am, what am I even saying? So the, the hands that grab the thing, he's got one for each, they're closed to facilitate the grabbing with both hands a little bit easier. And even then, it's not that much. I mean, you got to get all these balls rocking just so. And I just, I just, give it some butterflies. Take a, buy a Marvel Legend. Buy a Jada Street Fighter and have a look at that, man. Because it's just, it's, it, things are different today and it's fine. It's fine. Let's look at the sword. So you get this, the sharpened edge looks really clean. It's just, it's got this nice metallic paint on it. The weathering, of course, the handle is super plain looking and it's got a couple of slots for materia. That's the biggest missing piece for me. Throw in some materia. What would that have cost you? Just some tiny colored pellets so I could throw in a couple of them, you know, that's, and then he's got this plug in the back here. Look at these tiny little rivets are painted. I love that. Love that. But yeah, somehow. Try to get that out. And you get this double-edged plug that you can plug in here. And of course, hang the sword on that, on one of the material holes. So that's kind of, you know, that hurts you for having material there, but that really doesn't plug in very well. I mean, sure it does, sure it does. It was just falling out for no reason. It's great, it's great. He gets the sword on his back. All these hands, the same nice level of detail. You get a pair of open hands and a pair of closed fists, and they come on this nice little keeper. Nice little basic figure stand. All I like other import figures. I love these. Every figure should include a little stand for more dynamic posing options. Comes with an extra slightly different style of grabber. And of course, it's got uh, little screws in there that you can tighten down to set, set some tension. Fairly satisfied, just he should have come with materia. Our Bring Arts Cloud Strife stands about 5 and 5 eighths to the top of the head, 6 inches to the top of the hair. At 5 foot 10 in game, this is like perfect 1 12th scale. What? Why is it that only like Japanese companies understand proper 1 12th scaling? Those guys are metric, they don't even deal in this feet and inches nonsense. Kicking off the video game figure comparisons, we have Jack's World of Nintendo, Donkey Kong, and Samus. These aren't in any kind of proper scale, but if they give us like all the Smash Bros characters, I'm down. They're technically supposed to be like four inches, and Samus I guess is about right, but they're not. Compare her to the Link and, and on and on. And then they say all this funny stuff on the packaging, World of Nintendo and, and whatever. This is the Metroid Prime 2 version, by the by. Interestingly, it's on the back of this insert where I find the most informative piece. They should print this on the packaging, Nintendo 4-inch franchise mix. That's what it is, man. When I saw this on the back of my DK, I'm like, man, I get it. Now I want all of them. Now I'm on the hunt. Okay, I don't mean to get carried away here, but it's like Jax could conceivably give us most of the proper Nintendo roster. And these aren't, these aren't that nice, but they're not terrible, and they're only 10 bucks in the store. Look at that gun. Why does it turn back like that, though? That, that's, that's, that's her arm. But she got double-jointed stuff here and there, and I mean, it's at least a more reasonable articulation scheme than the $130 cloud. I'll stop. Next up, the Jada Toys Street Fighter 2 Ryu and Chun-Li. This is what you want. These are $25. These are fantastic. Go buy all of these. <laughs> Swinging into the Hasbro-verse, we've got Spider-Man from Spider-Man. The last three of them anyway. As well as Mr. Fix-It. Because he's going to fix your wagon. Connie, good news. The neighbor's coming over. Said he's going to clean my clock. Growing up in a glass bowl with chameleons, lizards, and tadpoles It hardly enters your mind that there's something better than this From McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, it's the Injustice 2, Superman, and Snake Boogie Brainiac Here are the Jazzwares Halo Master Chiefs in both 4 and 6 inch scale 
And finally, going across the import verse, we got the Tamashi Nation's SH Fig UR Super Saiyan Vegeta, Awakened Super Saiyan Blood. As well as the Medicom Mafex Black Costume Spider Man. L listen, bud. <laughs> listen, bud. <laughs> I know, I'm complaining a lot, but I really do like this figure. I'm just also really disappointed in it. The look is spot on. It looks really, really good. The extra paint, it just takes it to another level. Uh, the articulation, it works, it's fun in a lot of ways, but it's fiddly and in ways that are just, I think, completely unnecessary compared to other other figures of the time. Uh, the accessories, he comes with the buster sword, and that's that's really all you need. Materia would be extra, but I think that would really, that would have put it over the top for me. He poses pretty well, you just be prepared for the legs to just come out. Or the hands to fall off, you know what I mean? But, uh... I I just can't recommend it for $130, man. These guys are high on glue, or maybe that's just me for paying it. But, I mean, this game came out in 97. I think that the $130, if we just split that up over, you know, all the time since then, that's not bad. Man, to have a really nice-looking cloud figure, 6-inch scale, it's just that... You can get a video game figure from Jada Toys like this for $25. There's just... There's no excuse for this to be so expensive. Let me know what you guys think of this figure in the comments. Is he making your list? Is the price just way too much? Are you like Cloud and not interested? If not, I got plenty of other properties on the channel for play just like, you know, right over, right over here. Check one of those out. Leave a like on this video and subscribe to my channel for more. Thanks. How about pizza power? I'm flying salsa food delight.